Raw dogging is not funny. This is a serious matter. Raw dog news. Raw dogging is a term that is considered slang and it means unprotected, unprotected. Okay. I've got to move, so I'm moving. Okay. Raw dog news. To the V to V podcast. My name is Marcus Parrish, and with me today, as always, is Alexi. Sure. How you doing, Alexi? That's your name. I'm good. Sometimes I am good. I'm sometimes good. we call ourselves short sleeves and erroneous. They might show up today. <laughs> they might. You never know. There's a lot to get to today. I I think um, I think we may have overdone it with with all of the things that we want to discuss. Yeah, we're overpacked, but I have been gone a week, so you know the week off is uh, it fills in pretty pretty rapidly. My God, if we had a lot of things happen this week, life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while; you could miss it. All right, so there's this story about uh, internet celebrity that popped up a little online publication called the Daily Dot. Ex Chapo Trap House host Virgil Texas accused of grooming teen, and the oh. and the sub headline is quote he fucked with my head at a very young age, so that's that's pretty inflammatory, like, right there, like yeah, everything like accused of groom, grooming. You got a quote from the alleged victim, like, very very strong. That's a very strong headline. But this ain't no Mike Jamone story. No, the so it goes on. The 24-year-old Twitter user accused Virgil Texas of Chapo Trap House fame of engaging in an inappropriate relationship with her when she was a minor. So the Twitter user who joined the platform in June under the name, I'm not going to say her name, she made this accusation on Twitter that he had um, groomed her and had had an inappropriate online relationship. The details are typical, and we don't need to really get into the details because it's exactly what you think it is. Online, Zoom calls, all of that. Right. Um, She says, I believed that we were in a long-distance adult relationship as he requested things of that nature from me, she alleged. So... Okay, so I keep reading this story, looking for some kind of conclusive evidence or something that points to this having actually happened, because the line is, believe women, which is, that's great. Um, Do you believe all of the accusations, though? I don't know. I don't think so. Because anyone can accuse anybody of anything. And in this case, there seems to be some weird stuff going on. The weird stuff is, she said she came forward with her story after the Daily Caller inquired about their, quote, relationship. And after she saw Texas sharing a platform with people like Brianna Joy Gray, which is his current podcast partner for a podcast called Bad Faith, and she happened to be the communications director for Bernie Sanders during the presidential campaign, Um, sharing platforms with AOC, um, Chelsea Manning, people that that this person, this this woman, saw as uh, heroes of hers. So now she's very conflicted about this person being with them. And, and, and these people accepting him, not knowing the bad stuff that he did in the past. Right. So the question is, how, how did the Daily Caller find out about this before she came forward? She came forward after they contacted her. Huh. They didn't print the story. 
they pass this information along, I guess, to the Daily Dot. Well, uh, could it have been that that he spoke out about it, bragged about it somehow? There's been radio silence on this from all all the other parties. I guess from everybody, really. It, this has just been like just laid out there. So no one's saying anything. The only people that are saying stuff are uh, the public who know about this, who care about this thing, who are either demanding that these people come forward and say something, or there's a little there's a little bit of the other attitude, kind of the thing that I'm talking about, um, about it not really being a story because it's not finished. Right. But not very strongly. I think I'm I'm the only one I've seen that's really kind of pushed the intricacies within the story itself, because here's the problem. No one reads fucking stories. They read the headline, and that's it. They don't get any deeper, and in this case, when they do get deeper, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's, right. This isn't even about whether it's true or not. It's about bad reporting and not giving people a clear idea of what's really going on. It's terrible. Like, this can ruin people's lives. and It's a complete smear campaign. And if furthermore, it's mob rules without thought. You know, it's pile on the internet and attack someone without fucking any type of evidence at all, you know, or any type of investigation. All right. So, so to conclude, she ended her thread by thanking those who followed along and urged all women in his path to stay incredibly cautious. You know, like this, this guy is some kind of horrible repeat offender, but there's been nothing nothing to show that at all. She didn't post any of the interactions that allegedly happened, nothing. It's all just her own Twitter account that was created on June 9th. Wow. She created the account on June 9th. So this could be anyone. It could be a robot, for fuck's sake. Could be, it could be created by the Daily Caller. Right. And then, you know, at the, and at the very end of the article, you had the obligatory stuff about being a victim of sexual assault or wanting information. And I'm going to give it out right now because it's good information, but to, but the audacity to put this this stuff at the end of this kind of article without even like coming to the conclusion that it actually happened is, is really terrible. So the, the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network hotline is 1-800-656-HOPE. And the National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-SAFE. There you go. So if something really happens to you and you really need help, please call those numbers. They have resources and can get you to safety. To wait eight years, all of a sudden create a Twitter account, and then the, story's, the story is just full of holes. This just needs to stop. I mean, if it was me, if I was the editor of this paper, I would, I would pull this story and pretend like it never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ.